know that it's time to break from that negative cycle. You stop doing things like how every other person does things. I will not operate under the crowd mentality, the mob mentality. I have come for an encounter. Let's read our Bibles together, church. So we're just going to read a few scriptures. Media, you're going to help us. We're going to go to Judges chapter 13. We'll read from verse 1 to 5. Then we'll read 13 to 14. And we'll read 24 and 25. Judges chapter 13, 1 to 5, 13 to 14, and 24 to 25. Other scriptures we'll read as we go on, as the Lord will help us. How to know your joyful news is under attack. Judges 13, 1 to 5. All right. Can we do that together? One, two, go. And the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Philistines 40 years. And there was a certain man of Zorah of the family of the Danites, whose name was Manoah, and his wife was barren and bare not. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman and said unto her, Behold now, thou art barren and bearest not, but thou shalt conceive and bear a son. Now therefore beware, I pray thee, and drink not wine nor strong drink, and eat not any unclean thing. For lo, thou shalt conceive and bear a son. And no razor shall come on his head. For the child shall be a Nazarite unto God from the womb. And he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. And the angel of the Lord said unto Manoah, Of all that I said unto the woman, let her beware. She may not eat of anything that cometh of the vine. Neither let her drink wine or strong drink. Nor eat any unclean thing. All that I commanded her. Let her observe. And the woman bare a son and called his name Samson. And the child grew and the Lord blessed him. And the spirit of the Lord began to move him at times in the camp of Dan between Zorah and Eshtal. Father, today we ask, let this be all about you. Please speak to us in a language that we understand. Have your way, O oh God, in this service. Give everyone here today, O oh Lord, their joyful news. And today we attack the attackers of their joyful news. And we put an end to the attack. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Now give your neighbor a high turn and tell your neighbor as you get on your seat, give your neighbor a high turn and say, I have my joyful news. All right, so you can take your seat in the presence of God. We know this story too well, the story of Samson. Who does not know Samson? Papa, I love the way Papa talks about Samson. Who doesn't know Samson? Look at your neighbor and say, do you know Samson? What do your neighbor say? Your neighbor knows something. All right, so let me jump into the heart of what we have today. So how do we know that our joyful news is or is or are, whichever one, are under attack? Is under attack. How do we know that it is under attack? Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, fire. No, your neighbor is not ready. Shout, fire. Now your joyful news is under attack. Number one, when you downplay on God's given instruction, God given instructions. When God gives an instruction and you downplay on it, then just get ready because that joyful news is what? Under attack. Now we heard as we read um, Judges chapter 13, we saw how God took his time through the angel to talk to Manoah's wife, preparing her for the assignment that was to come. You know, because of how delicate the situation was, God had to get Samson's mother to start the lifestyle of a Nazarite even before he came. She had to start doing what her son would not do. I don't know if you understand. Now, the, a Nazarite is the one, if you go to Deuteronomy, you will see in scriptures where you, uh, numbers actually, numbers, if you go to chapter, I think chapter 6, read from verse 1 to 5, thereabout. You will see how the, it was mentioned, what the Nazarites do, how they should behave, what they should do. And, and this woman, she was about to carry a seed, and this was a Nazarite. She was not the one that was the Nazarite, but it was her seed. And in order for her to carry this seed, there were things she couldn't do so that she does not contaminate the seed. So as she starts this journey, God gives instruction. He didn't stop her talking to her. He now, the angel still shows up to her husband, Manoah, and also fathers give more instructions and says she should do what? Observe all that has been said. One of the things that will attack Attack your joyful news is if you don't pay close attention to the instructions God is giving. When we start a new season, a new year like this, God begins to 
download instructions. There are instructions that come from the pupit. There are instructions that God gives to you directly. Please, whatever you do, follow the instructions. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, follow the instructions. No, your neighbor is the wrong neighbor for this service. I know. But tell another neighbor, follow the instructions. So no reference was made in the Bible that God told Samson. God, no reference as he was growing. We didn't read any part. If you read, you know, Judges and all the places, you see Samson. There was no place the Bible would tell us, okay, so the angel now appeared to Samson, or God appeared to Samson and said to Samson, you know what? I told your mother this, this. So anything Samson was going to do was tied to what the mother and the father had received. I need you to put that at the corner of your mind because it's very important. Meaning that Samson didn't receive the instructions directly did not make the instructions ineffective or was not an excuse to disobey them. So I may not be the person that gets the instruction, but if the instruction has been gotten and given to me, my place is to obey. Because I will not stand before God and say, it's not me that received it. You have no excuse if you don't follow through. And I'm saying this here because I also want to tell us as a church, you come to church Sunday in, Sunday out. Instructions come from the pulpit. Please follow the instructions in 2024. In 2024, pay attention to what God is saying through your pastor. I'm telling you in church. Now we have said fast. Some people think it is punishment. Some people are saying they cannot fast. Some people are saying they don't know how to fast. Some people are saying my job is too tedious for fasting. I, I have plenty jobs to do. Who gave you the plenty job? Isn't it God? Someone told me, sent me a message the, this night before fast and said to me, Mama, I am going to fast, but I cannot fast in six because I have three big jobs that I'm doing. Mention, and, I, and it will take my strength, but I will come for prayers. I did not answer him. It was later, one day, I said this type of answer, you don't answer in text message. It's when you see the person. I said, who gave you these three jobs that you are saying you're doing now? God. God gave you. And now you're telling God that because of the job he gave you, you cannot fast till six. I said, if he takes it from you, what will you say? You, I, I, when he takes it from you, you will fast. You will fast. You will have reasons to fast. Because we, we like to fast when there's problem. But when things are going well, we forget what brought it. That it is the same things that brought it that will keep it. I told him, better fast this fast. You will fast it and you will do it till six. And he agreed finally. I hope that's the same way you are listening to me. All of you that did not fast last week. One week is gone. We have two weeks. You will fast. For some of you, after the two weeks, because you not do, you will do the third week because you will complete your own 21 days. Fast now that there's no problem. Don't wait till problem comes. You will fast more than six to six for 21 days. There's a kind of problem that will show up seven days dry fast. Food will not enter your mouth. God forbid that you will wait till you get to that point before you start doing what you should do. In 2024, when we say come for prayer at 5:30 p.m., show up. There is a grace and there is a blessing for showing up. I am saying this and God bear me witness. I'm standing on this altar to say it this year. When we say show up, show up, it is not for attendance. It's for your good. The Bible has said do not forsake the assembly of the brethren. There are battles that you don't want to fight in 2024. If God gives instruction... Last year, God gave us instructions. Not too many people followed the instructions. This year, we will not do business as usual. If you are here, make sure you are here. Don't put one leg here and one leg elsewhere. Let everything be here. When God gives instructions, please, I beg you, follow. Follow. You don't know what God has shown that we are trying to divert, that we are trying to stop. Follow. Look at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor. Follow. Tell your neighbor it's easy. No, no, no. Look at that neighbor. Say it's easy. Follow. Ask your neighbor, will you follow? What's your neighbor saying? So this year, please, 
when destructions come, pay attention to them and follow. The next thing that happens when your joyful news wants to be attacked, you begin to make compromises. Something you know you are in Nazareth. He started to compromise. Judges 16:1, the Bible says, Samson went to Gaza and saw a prostitute there and went into her. Samson, you, you saw prostitute. You went and slept with her. It is sleep, went in, had sex with prostitute. In Nazareth as you are. But he finished doing it and he did like this. Nothing happened. So he felt he was okay. That's what happens. Compromise is, is tricky. It comes and when you start, you don't get consequences of your actions immediately. So you think you are fine. So he did it and it was okay. He shook his body and strength came. The power of God came. He said, I'm still there. And he continued moving. Something, you saw a carcass, lion that you killed. And there was honey. You took it and you ate it. Something is a Nazarite. He is not supposed to eat anything unclean. But he took it. He ate. Went and gave his parents. Even the Israelites don't eat unclean things naturally. So even the parents, if you read that part of the scripture, the Bible says he did not tell his parents where he got the honey from. So they ate it with him. Compromise. After doing that, Philistines are upon you. He will shake. He will be able to do blah, 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 blah. And he will do magic. He will say, I am okay. But compromise. It is little by little. Then he gets to, uh, which one? Uh, he married a wife, a Philistine woman. I think that should be, I can't remember which, which chapter of the Bible is that one. Uh, is this 16? When he married a Philistine woman. He married a Philistine sham, a woman. Uh -huh, and he married her, that one. He did that one. Even though God said yes, he allowed that one to happen. Because his parents told him, you shouldn't. I didn't know people in our place for you to marry from. Because he was not supposed to marry from that place. But the Bible says that God allowed that one. Fine. Then something in chapter 16 verse 4. Amplified version says... After this, he fell in love with a Philistine woman living in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. Samson, what are you looking for in the valley? You were doing your compromise on the mountain and in the hill and on the plain land. You now carried it to the valley. It did not do you. You went to the valley. The deception here is that when you start making compromises, it usually is as if nothing goes wrong. So after all, I have done this. I've mentioned different things he did. And it was as if everything was okay. Judges 16.3 says, And Samson lay till midnight, and arose at midnight, and took the doors of the gate of the city. This is after he slept with a prostitute. After See, after sleeping with prostitute, <laughs> hey, Jesus is Lord. Finish sleeping with prostitute. Judges 16.3. Please read with me. After he slept with the prostitute, so what happened was that the Philistines heard he was there. So they said they would wait, wait for him till morning so that they would catch him. But by midnight, the Bible says, at midnight he got up, took hold. I think, did you move fast? And Samson lay till midnight and arose at midnight and took the doors of the gate of the city and the two posts and went away with them, bar and all. Please, I was thinking, I was trying to imagine, <laughs> last time I was trying to imagine what, how Samson looked. The only person that could come to my mind, forgive me, if you have watched the uh, uh, Incredible Hulk. That's the only person I could think of that, you know, that I'm just, I'm just wondering, how does a man, eh, you finish sleeping with a woman, midnight, you carry gates, and the pillars, the, the uh, ba bars, everything, and you carry, the, carry them to the top of, you climb hill, you climb mountain, hill, do you know to climb hill, what is that, and you are carrying that kind of thing. So I feel saying prostitute, I can carry this. I'm fine. I'm good. I'm okay. Compromise is, is wicked. Look at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor you can't compromise in 2024. Tell your neighbor you can't compromise in 2024. When you begin to gradually trade off, give up a few of your values, your beliefs, or give into things you would have never done, then just know that your joyful news is under attack.
There are things you told yourself, I, this is what I value. I can't do this. But gradually, you have started to shift your boundaries. You have started to allow these things. That lady that has been smiling in your office, be careful, that smile. That smile is Delilah's smile. She's asking you, how are you? And you're answering fine. She says, ah, did you eat today? And you just think it's casual talk. It's a lie, yo. That is how it's to start. Bef before you know it, you start comparing her with your wife. You say your wife doesn't even ask you how you're doing like this. See the way she's just, she's just humble. See the way she's just respectful. Respect, keep respect. Yeah, will be careful. Compromise. When you begin to cut corners, little things, there are some joyful news that are tied to. There are things God may just tie your joyful news to. For some of us, it may be our consecration. For some of us, your joyful news is tied to integrity. Your joyful news is tied to honesty. For some of us, our joyful news may be tied to commitment, dedication. And when you begin to compromise on integrity, you, you know that this is the way to do this work. They are telling you do it this other way. You begin to cut. It is just a little thing. Before you know it, you are in the valley. Can someone shout fire? No, 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 you're not shouting your fire. Can someone shout fire? What I'm saying, is it too hard? Are you following? Is it blessing you? So please, compromise is doing the wrong things to get there. Doing the wrong things to get there. You want to get a good grade. Girl, you go and agree. You sleep with a lecturer because you want to pass. After passing that pass, it does not guarantee that you get a job in the future. So what is the end game? What's the end result for that thing? We must be careful, please. It didn't start in the valley. His, his problem, what happened to him, didn't start in the valley, but it ended in the valley. So that's what compromise does. The more you keep going, I just need you to have the picture in your heart. That you keep doing the wrong things and you are not caught or nothing wrong happens. Does not mean that's the way it will continue to be. It's just a matter of time. And the more you keep doing these things, it will just take you to where we call the valley. And you know who is waiting for you in the valley? Delilah. Delilah is waiting. The Bible says he went to the valley. That's where he saw Delilah. Delilah was waiting at the valley. Number three, your joyful news is on attack when you don't address the negative patterns around your life. When something happens that is negative, please start addressing it immediately. Don't wait for it to reoccur. Do you know that Samson, what happened with him and his wife was exactly what happened with him and Delilah. It's just that Delilah took her own. She had, Delilah was more advanced. See what happened. The Bible tells us, I do, do I have it here? The Bible tells us, Samson married a, this woman, his wife. And he did a riddle. There was this riddle he did, if media can show us. And he now said, anybody that gets it, this is what he will do for the person. So, Sorry. Uh, uh, I don't want to go into it. So, you know, he did the radio because of time. So, he did the radio and that was it. So, as he, as uh, his wife, Philistines told the wife to go and meet Samson and get the answer. She started all the talk for days, seven days, number of days, begging him, tell me, I'm your wife now. How won't you tell me? Wife. Samson tells the wife. The wife goes and tells the Philistines. They now give the answer. So he had to now give them what he said was to give. And he said to them, you wouldn't have got this answer if my wife did not tell you. So he knew that it was her that told them. Then another situation plays out almost exactly the same way. Philistines go again, meet your lover. He did not marry this one. And now tells her to meet you for your strength. When she started talking to you, it did not look like something that happened before. When she started telling you, I don't you love me, you did not put one and two together. Now these, these girls that do I love you, I love you, they are, they are, they are, they are Delilah's, they're all moving around. You did not put one and two together. Which kind of love, what, what is that medicine, what is that charm Delilah had that your eye did not see, that what you just experienced with your wife is playing out again with Delilah. Because he would have said, eh, eh, Delilah, I've been beaten once. I know this pattern. I know this thing. Eh, 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 I will not give in. Please, when there is a negativity, once it happens once, don't wait for it to happen the second time before you do something about it. Address it immediately. And when you see it the second time, don't explain it. Don't condone it. His problem was that he condoned it. 
The problem was that he allowed it. The problem was that he, he, he didn't have a problem settling around negativity. Don't ever allow, don't stay side by side with negativity. Can someone shout fire? What was the first thing I said? What was the second one I said? What was the third one I have just said? Let's go to the fourth one. Your joyful news is under attack when you don't learn from past mistakes. And that was his problem. I can't even run. I can't stay there. The next thing I want to say, let me see if I will just stop here. Judges 16, 20 says, Then she called Samson. The Philistines are upon you. He awoke from his sleep and thought, I will go out as before and shake myself free. But he did not know that the Lord left him. All the while he was doing all those things he used to do, he will come out like before. He will do Spirit of God went up. Boom. There you start. Power and might. He said, I will do what I used to do. But he tried it this time. It didn't work. It didn't work. God forbid that gradually in 2024 we'll be silencing the voice of the Holy Spirit without knowing. Until you lose it completely, you discover where is the Holy Spirit? Where is God in my life? How, how did I get here? And that was how something that was how he shook. No magic, nothing. Heaven had closed on him. There was no way out. Kalabashayatan. Please, your joyful news is under attack. When you settle in the old, don't feel life from what happened yesterday. He said, I will do what I used to do yesterday. Eh, eh. The joyful news that is coming today is dependent on you doing things differently today. It's not going to come the same way it happened yesterday. Eh, eh. It is different. Because God says, I will do a brand new thing. It means that it will come with a different methodology. It will not be in the same way it came yesterday. So for every success recorded, move on. Every victory won. Move on. Don't dwell on yesterday. The Bible says, forget ye what? The past, the old. I got it right. Don't stay in. I got it right. Move on and look for ways to do things better. Something was comfortable in just, I will shake and things will work. Please, for every success, victory in 2024, there is still more ahead. Leave it. Thank God for what he has done. But keep moving. Look at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, keep moving. Tell your neighbor, keep moving. You, I can't even hear you. Tell your neighbor, keep moving. Tell your neighbor, keep moving. Tell your neighbor, keep moving. Your joyful news is under attack when your language changes to I. When your language changes to I. He says, I will. I. It's not even God will help me. It's I will shake. Where's that? Thing? I will go out at as other times before and shake myself. Is it you? Or is it God that has been doing these things? So when he started sounding I, that was where problems started to come. In Judges 16.20 he said, um, that's Judges 16.20, right? Okay, so he says in, um, if you go to, uh, if we can, well we don't have time, but if you look at Luke chapter 12, where the rich fool, it was still the same I mentality. If it is Lucifer, Isaiah 14, Lucifer still came from, I will ascend. And these things, he said it in his heart. He didn't even say it out. Read that scripture in Isaiah. He said it in his heart. I will ascend. I will do this. I will do that. God that sees the heart. Remember when we say a Roy, he's seen everything. He's seen the one inside. He's seen the one outside. Everything. May God keep our heart sweet with the right words and posture in the name of Jesus. So please, it never goes well when you focus on yourself. Check scriptures. So your joyful news is under attack when you begin to attribute your successes to any other thing than God. But finally, as I tidy up, I want to say a few things. And this may serve as a warning to us, just as just maybe caution, just to caution us, or so that we are careful in 2024. If you read the story of Samson, you would discover that the Bible never really said that Samson should not tell anybody. I didn't read it anywhere, except you read, you read it and you tell me you saw it. The Bible didn't say, don't tell anybody your strength. But the thing is that you don't even give your enemies your your strength, as in your, your success, what, what, your secret, you don't tell your enemies. But that was what he did. But the Bible didn't say don't tell. So the problem for me is not even that he told. 
And another thing is that, do you know what? Even if he told Delilah, there's something we know. They wouldn't have been able to pin him down to cut his hair. They wouldn't have been able to pin him down. Is it the person that, that 3,000 soldiers, men of East, uh, Judah, came to meet him in the, in the hill? When he had done the things he did, I cannot tell you the story, so I'm just rushing it. And they went to meet him in the hill because the Philistines wanted him. They say, we want to bind you and give you to the Philistines. And he says, if you will not kill me, then you can go ahead. They say, we won't kill you, we'll just, we'll just tie you with rope. And the Bible says they tied him. Can media show us that scripture? It is Judges 15, 13 to 14. 14 says, um, or 13, bound him with two new cords and brought him up from the rock. And the cords that were, this is in 14, and the cords that were upon his arms became as flax that was burnt with fire and his bands loosed from off his hands. As in, if you like, tie him. He will untie himself. So you won't be able to pin him down to even cut his head. But you know what? Nobody, I don't think anybody could have done what they did. It could only be Delilah. It could only be Delilah. Only Delilah could have done it. Because he slept on her laps. If it is, if he was awake, they wouldn't have been able to get that, uh, Samson. They wouldn't have gotten him. But he slept on her lap. That's where end of story. Which kind of sleep are you sleeping on the lap of a woman? They start cutting hair. You will not know that they are cutting your hair. Shock them. Shock them. Where that, that is where, where all your, 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 your life is in that hair. There's no how you, if someone touch hair, you will shake even in sleep. You that that money in that account, which kind of you men that I know, which kind of woman will make you bring out that kind of money? You will, as in, this is life like this. If anything is happening, even when you're sleeping, you're sleeping with one eye open. But something slept with his two eyes closed on the lap of a woman. How was that lap? What was Delilah doing? He slept. His vulnerability was in the place of his weakness. A sleep of death. I call it a sleep of destruction. Please, in 2024, be careful where you sleep. Don't sleep on the lap of Delilah. Don't become comfortable in your weaknesses. I think Samson had a weakness of women. Don't be comfortable in the company of enemies. He liked the company of enemies. What are you, every woman you go out with is an enemy. What are you, you, you do not see anybody in your people's place, in your own city, your own people to, to befriend. So, don't be attracted to destiny destroying relationships in 2024. And this isn't the year to go to the valley. Did you hear me? Look at your neighbor, tell anybody this is not the year to go to the valley. You know why? Delilah is waiting for you in the valley. Don't go there. Don't go there. Destruction is waiting for you at the valley. In 2024, please, walk on the areas of your weaknesses. Don't give strength or voice to your weaknesses. Deal with it now so that it does not destroy you. You know what those weaknesses are. Don't be a slave to them. Don't feed your weaknesses by indulging in them. One of the ways we feed weaknesses is when we indulge. When we give our weakness what it wants. It wants porn, you give it porn. It says it's food, my body wants to eat. You give it food, you don't fast. You are, this, this flesh, you are to be in control of it. It shouldn't control you. So what am I saying? What did I say now? Don't feed your weaknesses by doing what? Indulging them. This is the year you will starve your weaknesses of what it wants. Starve it. Look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, starve your weaknesses. You people are afraid of the neighbor self to even say, say, starve your weaknesses. So I believe that, like I said, that was his weakness. So in this year, we will deny our weaknesses of what it wants. We must be in charge. Take control. Take the driver's seat. Allow God lead you so that you don't go to where? The valley. Remember, Delilah is waiting for you in the valley. Can someone say, I will not go to the valley? Tell your neighbor, say, I will not go to the valley. 
can someone say, I will not go to the valley. Rise up on your feet. Say in 2024, in 2024, I decree every form of attack against my joyful news. Can someone shout fire? Can someone shout fire? I don't know how the enemy will want to show up in 2024. But can we make it a prayer against every attack, every form of attack over my joyful news waiting for me around my life in 2024? Right now, I command, go down by fire. Catch fire. Can someone shout fire? Can someone shout fire? Can someone shout fire? I pray for you. You will not go under this year. Oh, every attack over your joyful news, over your congratulations, your celebration, as your amen will turn, I decree, let them scatter by fire. Let them scatter by fire. Let's raise your two hands, everyone. Anyone struggling with any form of weakness today, the power of God is made available to help you. Grace is released to help you. Over addictions, let them break. Let them break. Let them break. Let the weakness go down. Let it give way. Ready, give way. Rise in strength. Rise in strength. Rise in strength. As you live here, the desire to do those things disappears forever. Disappears forever. Let the amen of God's people turn down. Let the amen of God's people turn down. Your hands will carry your joyful news. Your eyes will see your joyful news. Can I make a prayer for someone? This week will be the week of joyful news. Throughout the year, you will have joyful news. You will not hear bad news in 2024. You will not hear bad news in 2024. You will not cry bitter tears in 2024. Let your amen turn down. This year will be a year of celebration. Back to back congratulations. Back to back laughter. If your amen will turn down three times, let your own start today. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor all things are working.